In this video, you will learn to solve word problems that use fractions or decimals and that require multiple steps to solve. Now, with word problems, there is not really any two types of problems that are always going to be the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you some different examples. And with these examples, it will help you with the thought processes that you need to solve other types of problems as well. So this, these examples are not exhaustive, but it's going to be to give us a sampling of types of problems you might encounter. So example one, we have Max who bought a bag of 20 oranges. He gave three fifths of them to Jimmy and then split the remaining evenly between Grant and Victoria. How many oranges did each person receive? So let's begin with Jimmy because that is who he began giving oranges to. So he gave three fifths of his oranges to Jimmy and he started with 20. So the question is, what is three fifths of 20? So three fifths of 20, the word of usually means multiply in math. So three fifths of 20 means we take three fifths times 20 or 20 times three fifths. So when you multiply, you can think of 20 as being 20 over one. And then the 20 and five, you can divide both by five to get four and one. So now we have four times three over one times one, which would give you 12 over one or 12. So Jimmy was given 12 oranges. So once he gave 12 to Jimmy, he now has 20 minus the 12, which is eight. So he has eight oranges remaining. And then it said he split those remaining oranges between Grant and Victoria evenly. So basically just divide the eight by two. Eight divided by two, or one half times eight, same thing, is gonna be four. So that is the same for Grant and Victoria both. So both Grant and Victoria received four oranges and Jimmy received 12. Okay, we have a few more examples. Example two says, Susanna earned $800 this week. She tithed one-tenth of her money, and then of the remaining money, she set aside one-fourth for savings and three-fourths for bills. How much money did Susanna tithe, save, and use for bills? So tithe says she took one-tenth of her money. So one-tenth of 800, is found by taking one-tenth times 800. So one-tenth times 800 is really the same thing as 800 divided by 10, which would be 80. If you can't do that in your head, you could go through the process. 800 is the same thing as 800 over one. We now have 800 times one on the top, over 10 times one on the bottom, 800 divided by 10. You can divide both by um, both by 10 would give you 80 over 1, which is 80. So $80 was um, spent on her tithe. And by the way, for those who don't know what tithe means, that is typically money that goes towards a church. All right, so then it says of the remaining money, she set aside one-fourth for savings and three-fourths for bills. All right, so she had 800 she gave $80 to her church. So the remaining money is 800 minus 80, which would be $720. So there's $720 remaining. And it says one fourth of that went to savings. So one fourth of 720 is found by taking one fourth times 720. So to do that, we can think of 720 as being 720 over one, and here we can do one times 720 on the top over four times one on the bottom. So basically this boils down to 720 divided by four. So 720 divided by four uh, would be one. One times four is four, subtract, we get three. And then we have a two we bring down. Four goes into 32 eight times. Eight times four is 32, subtract, we get zero. And then there's another zero over here. So basically just add one zero at the end. Our answer is gonna be 180. So 180 went to savings. 
And then from here, three-fourths went towards her bills. So we can do three-fourths times 720. And this one, kind of a quick way to do this, we know one-fourth is 180. So if we take that times three, that gives three-fourths, right? So 180 times three would give us our answer for the amount spent on her bills. So 180 times three, we do three times zero to get zero. Three times eight is 24, carry the two. Three times one plus two is five. So $540 went toward her bills. And we can double check this because if we add all this together, 540 plus 180, we get seven, er, yeah, 720. And then 720 plus the other 80 for the tithe gives you 800 total, which is what she started with. So that verifies that we do have the correct answer. We have two more examples. Example three says Bob picked four and one fifth baskets of tomatoes and Larry picked two and three fourths baskets of cucumbers. If each basket held one and a half bushels, how many bushels total did they pick? So to begin, we can start with Bob. So so Bob picked four and one-fifth baskets, and each basket held one and a half bushels. So if we do four and a half times one and a half, that gives us the total amount of bushels. So to multiply, we can do uh, convert both of these to improper fractions. So the first mixed number, we do four times five plus one. That gives 21, put that over five. Times one and one-half, convert that to an improper fraction. 1 times 2 plus 1 is 3, and then put that over the 2. So we have 21 over 5 times 3 over 2, and multiply the tops together. 21 times 3 is 63, over 5 times 2, which is 10. So we have 63 over 10. All right, and now for Larry. Larry, same concept. So for Larry, he picked 2 and 3 fourths baskets and each basket held one and a half bushels. So if we take two and three fourths times one and one half, that would give us the amount of bushels that Larry picked. So again, we convert both to, um, to improper fractions. The first mixed number, we do two times four plus three to get 11, put that over four. And then one and one half, we already said over here, was three over two. So we have 11 over four times three over two, Nothing cancels, so we multiply 11 times 3 to get 33, over 4 times 2, which is 8. So together, the total amount of bushels is found by adding the 63 tenths and 33 over 8 together. So you could convert to mixed numbers first, um, but there's really not a need necessarily. Um, so right now, we'll just kind of keep it as it is and just add them together. So to add fractions together, we need a common denominator. So looking at 10 and 8, what is the common denominator for 10 and 8? Well, 10, multiples of 10 are 10, 20, 30, 40, etc. And then multiples of 8 would be 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, etc. Notice they both have a common multiple of 40, which is going to be what we want our denominator to be. So the 63 over 10, we can write as something over 40. And 33 over 8, we can uh, set equal to something over 40. So the first one, we do 10 times 4 to get 40. So 63 times 4, uh, that would give you 12, carry the 1, it's 252. Second fraction, 8 times 5 is 40. So 33 times 5 on the top that would give you 165. So what we have is 252 fortieths plus 165 over 40. So now from here, we can add them together. The numerators, we would add 252 and 165. We would get seven, five plus six is 11, carry the one, one plus two plus one is four. So we have 417 over 40. So this would be our answer, but it's going to be helpful if we convert to a mixed number. 
So we can take 417 divided by 40. Now this one you can maybe kind of do in your head, uh, at least the beginning part, because we know that 40 uh, goes into 417. It's going to be 10 times, because 10 times 40 is 400. And then another 40 would be too big. 440 is too big. So it's going to be 10 up here. So 10 goes up here. 10 times 40 is 400. Subtract, we get 17. And the remainder we can write as a fraction, which would be 17 over 40. So the answer is that together they picked 10 and 17 over 40 bushels. And for this one, there's different ways you maybe could have approached this. Um, so what you could have done maybe is you could have added the baskets together first. So if you could have added four and one fifth with two and three fourths first. And then from there, once you have that, then you can multiply by the one and one half. So that's another approach you could have used and that would have given you the same answer. So for word problems, there's not always one set way of doing things. But as long as you get the correct answer, then that's good. We have one more example, example four. In this example, Nathan bought three pounds of bananas at 42 cents per pound and five pounds of peaches at 89 cents per pound. He paid with a $10 bill. And the question is, what change did he receive back? So this problem involves decimals instead of fractions, which I think most students find simpler a little bit than fractions. Uh, but anyway, we have two different things that he purchased, right? He bought bananas and peaches. So we need to find the total of each fruit and then put it together to get the total cost and then subtract that from $10 to get the change. So that is our big picture, what we're doing. So now with the details to find the cost of bananas, we do three times 42 cents. So 0.42 times three. When you do that, 0.42 times three, you multiply like normal. So three times two is six, three times four is 12. And the decimal point needs to go over two places because we have two digits after this decimal point right here. So it goes over two places to get over here, which gives us 1.26. So the bananas cost $1.26. Now the peaches, he bought five pounds at 89 cents per pound. So we do 89 cents times five. So 89 cents times five, we do five times nine to get 45. Take the five, carry the four. 5 times 8 plus 4 is 44. And there's two digits after the decimal point up here in 89 cents. So the decimal point moves two places to the left to get $4.45. Now the total cost is found by adding those two numbers together. 445 plus 126. So if we add those together, make sure the decimal point is lined up. And we add like normal. 5 plus 6 is 11. Take the 1, carry the 1. 1 plus 4 plus 5 is, or 1 plus 4 plus 2 is going to be 7. Decimal point goes here. 4 plus 1 is 5. So the total cost is $5.71. Now the question is asking what change did he receive back when he purchased the fruit with a $10 bill? So to find that change, we take $10 and we subtract. 571. So when you subtract, you have 10, and then you have 571. And when you set this one up, make sure the ones place are lined up. You need to put a decimal point here and add two zeros to subtract properly. Now at the top, zero minus one doesn't work because zero is smaller than one. You can't borrow from this zero or this zero which means we must borrow from the one. So the one becomes a zero, the zero becomes a 10, and now we borrow from the 10, 10 becomes a nine, this becomes 10. Now we borrow from this 10, it becomes a nine, and then this becomes a 10. So now we have 10 here, which works. We can subtract 10 minus one to get nine. And now nine minus seven, we get two. Nine minus five is four. Decimal point stays lined up. 
and our solution is four dollars and 29 cents so in this lesson we have walked through different examples and this gave you an idea of different types of problems you might encounter and again these examples are not exhaustive meaning it's not going to cover every single type of question you'll encounter but hopefully this gives you an idea of how to set up different types of problems and that concludes our lesson for today we will see you next time